And I talked to them and, and just shared the gospel with them. And my heart went out to him. But he listened. And um, I hope he makes the decision to accept Christ as a Savior. Because my hell is a real place. Mm -hmm. It really is real. Um, and yet, here we have Peter. He went to Cornelius' house and shared the gospel. You know, before we can get saved, we need to know that we're a sinner. We're, we need to know that that um, that we break the Ten Commandments. I told that guy I was witnessing to. Um, I told him, I said, the laws of physics, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And I said, when you go out and steal, it's not only hurting yourself. You go rob a grocery store, you're gonna get, there's a consequence for your action. You're going to be put in jail. It's not, not only are you hurting yourself, but you're hurting the person you're doing. And it might be some time before you might think you'll get away with it for a while. But it's going to come back to get you, one way or the other. This, for everything we do down here on earth, there's going to be an action for it. And my, I told him how he needs Christ and needs to repent and just repent of his sins. It's, it's sinners that need in need of a Savior. Um, they that be holy, not a physician, but they that are sick. Before you can get saved, you have to come to the realization that you're a sinner. You break the commandments and you're hurting other people. And um, so God's call to us, uh, God's call to us to answer someone else's prayers. So are we willing to go and answer God's call to answer someone else's prayers? And then reason number three, the call from within or our conviction. If you go to 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, starting in verse 20, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. It says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. First of all, what is an ambassador? What is an ambassador? An ambassador is a representative. We are representing the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We have God's message, God's holy word that changed lives. And we're authorized and command by God to preach it. Don't need no politician to prove this message. It's been approved by God, the King of Kings, who created heaven and earth. Um, and as Christians... Representing the King of Kings, we need to have good testimonies. Because people are looking at our lives. They have shirts to say, what would Jesus do? They would look at us and say, you know what? Would they say this about us? You know, that person is no different than I am. He does the same things I do. He just calls himself a Christian and goes to church. There's no difference in his life and mine. He does the same things I do and gets in the same stuff, you know? What's the difference between him and me? My, how important our testimonies is that we need to live according to, to the Bible and strive. It's a daily war, a daily battle. We need to put on the whole armor of God and just strive after his righteousness and die to flesh and, and try to obey the Ten Commandments and the, the commandments in the Bible. My, how important it is. We are representing the Lord, the King of Kings. And with this on our conscience, we might be that person's last hope of ever receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior. And they're looking at our life and our testimony. Well, he's no different than, he wants me to have what he has, but I already have what he has because other than just a name. You know? I've run into so many people that's looked down on Christianity because of that. My, how important that we keep a good testimony. Um, with this on my conscience, I want to do everything I can possibly do to win people to Jesus um, and get out the gospel. Whether with direct line ministry, you know, whatever means necessary, it's about getting out God's word. Whether by truck, uh, hopefully airplane, but whatever means necessary. A boat, whatever means of getting out the gospel, that's what I want to do. I want to make a difference before it's too late. 
So the call from within is knowing that there is people dying and going to hell if we don't do something. And then reason number four. The call from beneath. Starting in Luke. Luke chapter 16. Starting in verse 19. Luke chapter 16. Starting in verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger, uh, tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to, or send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come un, into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Here we have the rich man and Lazarus. Rich man cried from an everlasting hell, where the pain that could never be quenched, fire never quits burning. Um, he cried for someone to go to his father's house. He says, I have five brothers. <clears throat> wow. There are people right now in hell, including the rich man, still crying out for someone to go and share the gospel. Right. My, how important the gospel is. I mean, hell is real. Um, it, could you imagine if it was possible, which it's not, because the Bible says right here that it's not possible for someone to come back from hell they would come back and how they would be pleading and begging at their loved one's feet doing a whole lot more than what we're doing I guarantee it and getting out the gospel showing people love and just begging them to get saved even if it means spending hours and hours baking them food doing whatever it takes to get them to the come to realization that God loves them and died for them don't want to go to hell come receive Jesus as your Savior they would be pleading um, you know, I don't like to see anybody hurt or suffer. When I go to Mexico and see some child in a cardboard house using pallets and, and whatever they could find to build their house and dirt floor and just scrapping from day to day to get food, I want to do everything I can possibly do for that child. I mean, he's hurting, he's starving to death, and, and he's in a dirty environment, the disease isn't. I want to do everything I can possibly do for that child. But you know what? This life is temporary. It's but a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. It vanishes away. And as much as I would love to just go out and help that kid, and we try, 
and I want to do everything I can possibly do for his physical needs. I need to want to do a whole lot more for the eternal soul, which is for all eternity. This life is but a vapor, it's here and it's gone. But eternity is forever. It's on and on and on and, and on and on. <laughs> Never ending. Oh, hell is so real. Oh, my, how much we should do everything we can do to share the gospel with others. Um, I worked at a restaurant and just, we, my manager, he was playing with a grill and he had a wig at the time and he was trying, it was after hours and he was trying to see how high you could get the fire and he was just, he was just having fun with the grill and he caught it on, it just kept getting higher and he had a wig and he got a spark in his wig and his hair caught on fire. It was so <laughs> funny. He was running around with smoke coming from his hair. <laughs> But my point is, hell is real and it's hot and it's pain for eternity. And we need to do everything we can possibly do to win the lost and tell people what Jesus did. He, planned, he made a salvation plan. Um, it is God's will that all should come to repentance. God is faithfully waiting to forgive sin. He puts sin as far as the east is from the west. It's, once we come and repent of our sin, once we repent of our sin, it's totally forgiven. Yes, there's still a consequence down here on earth. But it's earth, down here on earth, it's just but a vapor. Our life down here on earth is but a vapor. It's here, and it's painful, and it's gone. But once it's gone, it's gone. Then we have all eternity. Um, you know, yes... There's still a result what we did on here on earth. But once we repent of it, it's forgiven. It's wiped clean, completely out of God's mind. It's like we never sinned. God is a just God, not willing that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. And you know what? It's our job and privilege and honor to tell others about God and what He did and how He suffered in flesh form, suffered and became man, and died on the cross for us. So no, for why missions? So why is missions so important? Number one, it's a command from God. Number two, there's a call from beyond. People were praying that someone would come and share the gospel. So are we willing to go? And then number three, the call from within. We are called to be ambassadors for God. That we might influence others through our testimony. And the way we live, that they may come to salvation. That you know, with this on our conscience, that our testimonies are so important. Our conviction should be: we might be that person's last hope of ever getting saved if we don't watch our testimonies and share the gospel with them. And then number four, the cry from beneath: we need to get real about hell and win the lost while there's still time, Amen. because we are running out of time. That's right. But my, I cannot emphasize emphasize enough on the importance of getting out God's Word. So, my goodness, if you're here this morning and you're not saved and you don't have that personal relationship, I beg with you and plead with you. Do it before it's too late. And maybe you're just not doing everything you can possibly do and, and as far as missions goes. And, just, and you're not witnessing to as much as you should be. You don't have that burden for other people. You don't love other people as much as you should. You love them enough to tell them about Jesus. And hell's real. I beg with you, just repent of what you haven't done and just say, Lord, help me to do more and just do it. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of MP3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening.